Carnosaur 2 was actually probably the most fun I've ever had making anything. I mean, just fun, you know. Um, I got left alone. Um, the director, I don't know what he was doing, but he wasn't there. So basically, they gave me five cameras, all the short ends I could eat, a little bit of a crew. I had earth-moving equipment, a dinosaur, and uh, a bunch of storyboards, and we shot for three days, you know. And uh, I wasn't bothered by anybody. <laughs> so we just made it happen. And then we went out in the parking lot and shot all the explosions. The sad part is on the first picture, you know, I think that the director kind of was hoping it was going to be the Valley of Guanji, but they, they didn't want to pay for any stop motion. And he actually went around and got bids on stop motion for it, you know. And they weren't going to do that. So what we had to figure out was how to make the mechanical puppets sort of kind of look like they were walking. And that was, that was interesting, you know. I was a dinosaur coordinator on that. John had another, John Beekler. I worked for John Beekler on that picture, actually all three pictures. And uh, I was a dinosaur coordinator because he had another picture going. So he needed somebody that he could trust. And I'd known John since before he animated her. We worked together on that, and uh, we worked together on From Beyond, so there was a bit of a history there. I heard about Carnosaur, and I heard about Jurassic Park, you know, and you're seeing stuff in the trades. And I'm going, okay, there's no way in hell I'm going to get on Jurassic Park, okay? So I thought, okay, I got a chance on Carnosaur, so I called Beekler. <laughs> I got to get on a damn dinosaur movie, you know? I got to. Um, and it just happened that he had another thing going, so he was being split in several different directions, and he needed somebody that he could trust on set to work this stuff. And it started out where they, they wanted to have like a little bit of the bobcat miniature built. So the, the bobcat, the miniature bobcats in the, in the film is actually built out of show card and foam core and some styrene and... Um, we blueprinted a real bobcat, basically just with stills and rulers and stuff like that. And uh, we made a fifth scale bobcat. It was like a, another puppet. So we extended it back so we could puppeteer the boom up and down by hand. And there was a pull cable so you could make the little bucket go and stuff like that. And then we put one of their figures in it. They had a camera problem when we were on location. So we didn't get all the coverage that they wanted. So we mounted the the Airy 3 we were shooting the, the miniature stuff with on a skateboard and put the miniature bucket on it and use that for the POV shots we should have got on location. So we're dollying around on the sets and, and it was like just down and dirty bootstrap, you know, again, just pull it out of your butt at the last minute. We, were, we shot about three days of inserts, maybe more. I know we went back a second time we had all these miniature shots that we didn't get, you know. I was like, okay, send the PA to Toys R Us and get me a big skateboard. And the guys are looking at me and I like, drill a hole in it and we bolt the airy to it, you know. And there's our, and I built a little thing that we could put the, put the boom on it so you have the POV shots of the guys driving into the dinosaur with the boom up, you know. And it's all, it's all on a skateboard and the whole miniature was a table with some texture on it painted and we hung the blacks in the back and then took some foam core and put some scallops on it and the uh, gaffer put some yellow light behind it so it was like city glow in the background. That was it. You know, that was, that was it. So it was just, I just got to have fun, you know. And, uh, you know, I think this stuff turned out okay. I mean, it is what it is. It's not Jurassic Park.